Thank you for listening to PoliticalStorm.com. I'm John Small. I've been uh, kind of goofing around a little bit today. My daughter didn't have school, so we decided to take the day off work and hang around at the house. And I've been on social media today way more than I have been in a long, long time. I'm scrolling through the different pages, and I see video after video of political experts saying that it's going to be a contested election on the Republican side because they're saying nobody's going to have enough delegates when we get to Cleveland. Okay, I don't know what numbers they're looking at. I decided to put together a little piece. It's at politicalstorm.com. It's also on the Facebook page for politicalstorm.com. And if you take a look at that image, it's going to be a whole lot easier to follow along. But I'll, I'll tell you what it says. I took the number of delegates that each candidate has, and I did for Republicans and Democrats, by the way. We'll start on the Republican side. They need 1,237 delegates by the time they get to Cleveland. Otherwise, it's going to be a contested election. Right now, Donald Trump has 994, Cruz 566, Kasich 153. Now, with the delegates that we have left, if Kasich won every single state and every delegate, he would still be 582 delegates short. If Cruz won every single delegate from every single election between now and Cleveland, he would still be 169 delegates short. But... If Donald Trump won every single delegate from every single state between now and Cleveland, he would have 259 extra delegates. So again, pundits, I don't quite understand what you're saying when you're saying that it's going to be a contested election, because Trump clearly has enough to get there. He's the only one on the Republican side that has enough delegates now to actually win this thing before a contested election would occur. So also on the same page that I posted on the politicalstorm.com Facebook page, You can see the quickest route for Trump to win. Uh, He would have to win Indiana, Nebraska, West Virginia, Oregon, Washington, and California. And if he got all the delegates from all of those, he would have 128 extra delegates. And he wouldn't need any votes at all from Montana, New Jersey, New Mexico, or South Dakota. Now, what's the fewest number of states that he could win? That number would be three. California, 172 delegates, and then pretty much any two others. Well, almost any two others. The ones that I have listed here are Montana and New Jersey, but it could be Indiana and West Virginia. It really doesn't matter. But three states would be the fewest he would need to have enough to win so there wouldn't be a contested election. And then I threw a third scenario on there just showing that he could still win it without California as well. Now let's take a look over on the Democrat side. Their numbers are different. You need 2,383 delegates to win there. Clinton has 2,165. Sanders has 1,357. Now, I'm going to tell you, the biggest reason for the huge difference in those two has everything to do with superdelegates. If you took the superdelegates out of this race, they are pretty darn close. But we can't take the superdelegates out of this race. Since 1984, that's the way they've done it. So here we go with 2,165 If Hillary won every single state between now and Philadelphia, she would have 3,107, 724 more than she needs. But here's the interesting thing. What if Bernie won every single state between now and Philadelphia? Well, that would get him up to 2,299. Well, that is 84 delegates short. Even if he wins every single delegate that's left out there right now, he would be 84 delegates short of being the winner. And like I said, I was on Facebook quite a bit today goofing around. My wife is not too thrilled about that. Sorry, Heidi. Uh, I should have been helping around the house. Anyway, I was on Facebook, and I noticed a lot of people were not too thrilled on the Democrat side right now because there are a lot of people who do support Bernie Sanders. And they really feel like with the superdelegates that he's kind of been cheated. And there's a lot of people right now pushing for him to drop out of this race and start running as an independent. That would be very interesting to see. Now let's take a look at Hillary Clinton. How many states would she need to win to clinch this thing? The quickest would be if we went through Indiana, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Oregon. If she got those four states, those are the next four, she would win it. She'd have 10 more delegates than she needs. Now what's the fewest number of states that she would need to win to clinch this thing? Remember, Donald Trump needed three. So how many does she need? One. She just needs California. So I think it's pretty darn clear unless some amazing thing happens here in the next week or two, that we are going to have Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. The big question now is, what happens to Bernie? Will Hillary say, Bernie, be my running mate? If she does, will Bernie say okay? Or will the people on Facebook get their way? Will Bernie be running as an independent? That would be a game changer. Follow along at politicalstorm.com. For politicalstorm.com, I'm John Small.